Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about handles. I ran into a situation just recently where my rounding hammer handle was too short. I couldn't get a nice swing with it. I also had a number of heads for a, a rock hammer, an eight pound sledgehammer, and a couple of, and an axe head that I wanted to buy, buy handles for. And then I started doing the research and I started looking into it. The price was pretty high for, uh, for handles. And I'm like looking around, a lot of great uh, YouTubers out there have plenty of, of instructables on how to make handles. So what I did was I watched them. I did a little bit of research. I figured out what was around me that was available in a way of wood. Well, I ended up going with this piece of black locust. Uh, this tree uh, is plenty of it around in my area. This tree happened to come down on a power line uh, and the power company cut it up, had it on the side of the road. It was a nice 36 inch length to it. It looked pretty good. I grabbed it and you know what? If it's free, it's for me. So I dried it out, split it, and uh, that's the material I'm using. And from what I've read, it's not too bad. Uh, it has a twist to it in the grain, but uh, not with the short lengths that I'm gonna use. So this is what I used. Black Locust. Now doing all the research, um, some critical issues pop up over and over again. You see a lot of people um, sticking to one particular wood species or another, but like I just said, availability is key, price is key. But more importantly, I found out uh, some simple truths about the structure of the grain and how it needs to be compliant with the way the head is mounted. Now, here I have a, a cutoff from the handle I made for this one. I extended it 12 inches and I ended up cutting it off. When I figured out exactly the length that I wanted, then I cut it to 12. Then I blackened, uh, charred the handle and waxed it. But I'll get into that in a little bit. Also, before I forget, I realized there are two methods that you can use when you're actually making the, the shaft of the, the handle. You can use a, a, an angle grinder with the sanding disc, uh, which was option number one for me. I had it set up, ready to go. But I really like the romantic notion of the draw knife. Uh, I priced out the draw knife. It was, it's quite pricey. You know, it goes from like 40 bucks to a couple hundred bucks for a nicely done one. Uh, but I do, have, I do have steel laying around. And I have plenty of mild steel and uh, the willingness to figure it out. Now, what I did was I took a piece of half inch square stock, mild steel, because I was just trying it out for the first time. I, put, I heated it up, I put a twist in it, and I flattened out the, the cutting edge in the center. I then I uh, forged it down to the thickness I thought was appropriate for the handle width. And I ended up uh, getting the contour, the edge, uh, hammered really close to what I want it to be. And then I sanded it uh, down with the, the angle grinder until I got the, the edge I wanted. And then I did the finished edges nice and it's quite sharp. Um, it's mild steel, but as I'm going to show you, it held up quite well to making two handles so far and uh, for the final uh, final treatment actually the final preparation I put the bend in that I found was comfortable it's like a bicycle handle and uh, I made sure the angle was right with a bunch of test poles and uh, there you go uh, making your own tools is super super satisfying and I highly recommend it and it just cost me time because this was steel I had laying around. Some of the design specifics that are critically important that I found um, making the handle for this three pound rounding hammer was that, and my research is that, pretty much to boil it down real quick, the grain has to line up with the head. Right here, like the grain has to line up with the head and also, you want 
full continuous grain the entire length of the handle. You don't want the grain going off to the sides. You don't want the grain going the opposite direction. You don't want it pretty much going anywhere other than the full length because you want to have that, all those grain bundles all working in the same direction. And if there are any faults going across, you'll see a lot of the mass produced hammers and stuff, the grain will go like straight across. And then when you're really whaling, then you're gonna have, that's where it's gonna break. So like here, when I was, when I was drawing down the actual handle here, I made sure that the, the grains were fully in line. They look good. And I emphasize this little line here. Um, so you can see exactly where the head goes. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the raw um, black hickory and I'm going to put, make a handle for this wrought iron, I guess it's a, a stone, stone hammer that I actually found in my yard while I was landscaping. And she's a beauty and uh, she's, uh, she's wrought iron so she looks uh, rather beat up. She did have a crack in it which I forge welded uh, back together and it looks really good even though I don't really plan to use this for anything but I guess hanging on a wall but I'm hoping to put a handle on it make it look nice and have fun doing it I want to get this even smaller so I'm going to continue to square it off best I can It's going to split whatever way it wants to split. Alright, here you go. You start to see where the grain is in this direction. It's pretty nice and square. It runs, flares out here towards the end. But obviously, for me, I integrated that into the, the handles when I started building them, that that would be part of the flare at the end, but some people don't want that. I sort of like the straight, the straight handle. Um, I felt it was more comfortable in the hand. You have the hatchet type that has more of the curve. Uh, the ax guys on here will probably uh, smack me around in the comments, but the uh, this is pretty much the best case scenario for me to start with to start drawing drawing some material off to get to uh, get this rock hammers handle in motion all right this all just being for personal use all good fun however it comes out it comes out this is uh, a bit of the uh, the art carving portion of our program uh, I've never done this stuff before uh, and I just enjoy doing it the handles and stuff that I make are for my own personal use if I was selling these God forbid uh, I'd probably heavily scrutinize every facet of this but like uh, I think most of you guys we're just here to have fun the pros already know what they're doing so uh, the rest of us are uh, just having fun trying to figure out what's going on now, I'm taking the draw knife I made, and I'm just gonna remove a lot of material. I made a reference line for myself at the end, so I always remember where that grain orientation is, because I want the oval of the head to be in the right, uh, right direction. If I ended up putting it opposite, then I'd have to throw the thing away. But with that line there, I know where I'm going, and uh, I can keep a reference for myself, so. Get started. Now, this isn't hundred percent well, this is pretty sharp, but this mild steel doesn't hold a great edge. So it doesn't go through the material that fast, but it's pretty hardwood too. 
uh, but the you I would imagine you'd have to be very careful not to only not to hurt yourself but not to remove too much material and uh, you can go really aggressive and go through this really fast you just got to slow down take a look see if you're doing it right and if anything slow it down take a break Alrighty, see we're developing an edge here. Uh, I'm pretty soon I'm going to take the head and I'm going to draw out the actual eye so I don't remove too much material, but it's still very early, really early. So we can just go to town. Be nice to have an actual woodworking uh, draw bench, uh, uh, but not yet. Maybe I'll make one. Who knows? checking my mark here. This is going to be the flatter side, so I have to remove more material. Just have this very old vise here, so bear with me. like a leather apron or something here. When you get into it and you just quit talking, you can go through this pretty quickly. The first two handles I did really didn't take long at all. Shortage. Now that we're getting really close, to, not really close, but close, closer to the actual size of the eye that you want to make uh, the handle fit, you want to slow it down a lot and come over here, size up the handle. Lengthwise, it's pretty good. You want to put a, a pencil in there, outline the center, so you know what that eye, what the minimum eye will be. Oh, way off. That's what I try. That's what happens when you try to do it on camera. Right, let's try this again. Right. Roughly, what we're looking at here, it's not showing up because of the 
mill scale and stuff falling off here is looking at here and here all right and now i did that terrible job of uh tracing out that eye but i can see where it's supposed to be um i got about a quarter inch of material on each side to remove um within an eighth on the other side so got to be real careful so just going to continue and keep removing material fast getting really close to this one side and we just slow it down I'm gonna be flipping it around doing the bottom end of the handle separately I, I like to do the front top first because I'd rather screw that up then have to do everything else first then screw that up and start all over Already you can see we've come a long way and uh, we're going to keep going, work on the other side now. All right, looking, looking at this eye that was punched probably a hundred years ago. My house is uh, over a hundred years old and this was found uh, about six inches down in the, the dirt. You can see, obviously hand done, this, this was slotted and drifted, a little wonky. But, I don't know, one kid in my eye. Um, we just need to make that match up here. Got to make the wood match the head. So, it's a little collapsed. So, mine's sitting a little proud. So, I'm going to have to continue to take more material off. All right, flipped it around, working the other side. Remember, constantly check, uh, at least for me, constantly check your eye. Make sure you're not overdoing it. And as I whittle down on this, perfect time for you to hit like and subscribe because I got plenty of these little projects and I love sharing it. And what I learn, I love to pass on. So uh, as a novice, a hobbyist, if there's something I found out that I can share that you can learn from, awesome. So hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I love hearing the comments. I love having the conversations with a lot of you guys, and I learned so much, really. You guys point me in the right direction for things I'm doing wrong, which is probably a hundred things in this video. But every day, every day's a learning day. So, that's great. Getting really close in this one. Now we've gone from the rough shaping to the medium shaping now, and uh, God willing, fine, fine shaping real soon. All right, let's flip it around again. Now, if I'm doing this carbon right, it doesn't look like it moved at all because the shape is getting pretty, uh, pretty uniform. But this side, with my reference mark, I can tell this side is a little bit thicker than this side. And I want them to be the same because I want to respect that grain line. Respect the grain line.
I'll tell you, this thing's working out pretty good. I'm very happy with this. It's even holding the edge pretty well for mild steel. Next, I'm going to use tool steel. I already have the steel set aside for it. It's a piece of, uh, it's a jackhammer bit. It's supposed to be pretty tough. So, this one fails. I have a go-to go -to piece of scrap metal for the next one. Danger zone here, I'm going too far. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Hmm. Couple of millimeters, couple of millimeters to go on every side. So, continue, continue. But I tell you, this is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. It's pretty monotonous uh, when you watch somebody do it, like maybe now. When you get out there in your shop, you're actually doing this, you're like legit carving. It's a simple form, you know, it's as ergonomic as you can get it, simple as you can get it. But if you get it wrong, you'll know. I know with the first one, the, uh, my first one here, the eight pound sledge hammer, found this head as well, put this on, I decided to utilize the curve, the natural curve of the wood, but using it, it doesn't work well. I might have to redo this one, because it has a natural bow to it that I thought might be good, but uh, I don't like it. So, yeah, every day's a learning day, but this was great practice, and uh, for a first attempt, I think I did pretty good. Now this one, this one's my third attempt. Well, God willing be many more. I have an axe around here. That, uh, is, well, it's just running around, a loose head. He's using it as a hot knife, for hot knifing. And uh, when I was building the shop, I put it somewhere safe. And it's so safe, I don't even know where it is. So as soon as I stop looking for it, I'll find it. Anybody else have that? You tear and join up, looking for that one thing. And it eludes you. It eludes you like nothing else. As soon as you don't need it, as soon as you stop looking, as soon as it isn't a priority, you find it in your back pocket, so to speak. It's both frustrating and rewarding. Just like a lot of good things. It would have been nice to find the thing when you needed the thing. All right, we're pretty close. Now we're doing the fine, we're taking off thin amount of material all around as possible. Because I let this thing catch, like it wants to do right here, it'll tear out a chunk. But now it's not the time for chunks. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents, as Bob Ross has taught us. But I don't know, I'm trying to avoid those kind of happy little accidents. But you know what? I've got lots of wood here. You, know, you break it, you ruin it, you move on. Save it, put it aside. I actually used the old handle off my rounding hammer as a handle for my file, which didn't have a handle. So I made a nice little taper hole to fit the tang of the, the file 
and I drove it in there, secured it, and it, it works quite well. So don't throw stuff away unless you have to. I don't know if you can see that, but that green is that green is beautiful. Reminds me so much of oak. So close, I can see daylight. Just like me, the sides are just a little too wide right now. We gotta work on that. On my research, uh, people pointed out, and I think it's very smart, that when you're actually putting the head on to make sure that you're not getting it to a point where pieces are splintering back on you and you're splitting the wood because you're only weakening it. So you want to make it so that head slides in, but without shearing through the grain and peeling it. You don't want to start a crack. Carving uh, is going to alleviate those points that are going to want to cause that splitting that I'm told is critically important. All right, look at this. Check this out. That's the first fit. It can only get better. See how that grain? Hopefully you can see it. Uh, the red marker I used to uh, give me a, a grain reference runs straight down the middle of that head. Pretty good. All right, let's keep working. You can see, hopefully you can see on the camera there, that there's some lines here, some little scuff marks that are put into the, onto the wood, transferred. Those are would be your first areas to shave down. Not too much, because the fit was pretty good so far. But I'm seeing towards the, the thin side here is just a lot of interference. So, just remove the little obstacles in your path. sailing. Like in the back here it's more of like just a central line I see. I just made it two point.
see where we've gotten to. Look where we started. So you can see a novice like me, or off YouTube, can do something real nice. As far as his head, that head's looking pretty good so far. It's not, there's no chipping back that I can see on the head. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the head back off. I'm gonna saw a cut line for the wedge. And then I'm gonna saw, saw the line down towards where I think the, the head is gonna stop. It always goes further than that during the, the uh, I don't know what you call it, but the heading ceremony. And, uh, and that should be, uh, we should be pretty close. I like it. Fun times. All right, just off camera, I took a bit of pine, made a wedge. Um, I was told that you want to use a wedge that is softer wood than the actual handle because you want the uh, wedge to compress more than the wood and you don't want the wood splitting and the wedge not giving. So, and also I have a bit of wood glue here that I'm gonna use. Uh, some people are adamant about either not using a wedge and just using the stomping method to re-secure the head or not using a wedge. And definitely some people don't want to use glue. I say use it all. Use it all. See how it goes down further? It always goes down further than, than it looks like it's gonna. But those wood fibers are compressing. The little bit of voids are giving out. Pretty good. Uh, I don't see any. There's one little, one little piece of wood that was sliced down, but it didn't crack, which is what we want. So now, I'm gonna re-secure it. I'm gonna put just enough wood glue to do the job. Start it with your hand. Send it on. Looking like it can give a little bit more. Grab the first thing I see next to me here, the flathead screwdriver. Let's send it down a little more. I don't think that's unnecessary. She's wedged in there real good. And what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to let this set up overnight inside. It's uh, about it's about 35 degrees, like one uh, Celsius. Um, so I don't want this wood glue out here drying. So I'm going to take it inside. The next time you see this thing, I'm going to have it. I'm going to cut it down flush. And I'm also gonna finish the other side because I like to do finish one side first and then continue to the other. So I get a little bit of a crack there. It's all stuff we'll check out tomorrow, uh, but you'll see it just about now. And here we are, next day. Dried up nicely. Uh, got the wedge in there, everything's seated nicely. The head's really firm. And I cut it flush. I like the flush look, so that's what I went with. And today, 
the next day. I'm going to be working on forming this out. I wanted about a foot long, like my rounding hammer. I really like that length. You know this is going to be decorative. I'm going to just form it down. Uh, and it's going to taper in towards the head. It's going to be a little wider at the butt here. And uh, that's today's plan. Then I'm going to treat it, do the char treatment uh, with the wax. And uh, just like these. And uh, be good to go. Let's put this up on the wall. Do some finish to it. And uh, another fun day in the shop. All right, moved moved it from over from the vise over to the anvil used the whole fast I made another video uh, I cut it down to size it's a little bit easy to work with it's got too many snags towards the rough end and I'm just gonna continue working this All right, now that I have it down to the dimensions that I want, I've tried it out, it feels very comfortable. It's all fast, it's doing great. Um, it just feels good in my hand, I've had it out. Um, now it's just the finish. I'm gonna take, put a little bit of a bevel on the bottom here. Other than that, it's gonna be done. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna char and wax the handle and call it a day. See, I like this particular dimension. Keeps it from slipping out of your hand. Even though I think I'm just gonna put this on the wall. But uh, some final cleanup, and that's it.
for is just a nice, even light char, nothing that'll ever affect its strength. But what this does is, uh, from what I understand, it's older, very old Japanese technique, charring the wood and then putting either oil or some sort of, sort of uh, sealant on it afterwards. And what it does is prevents any rot uh, from getting into the wood and preserves it from insects. And uh, I just think it looks really good. And I've seen uh, numerous people do this, uh, Daniel Lea, um, uh, Alex Steele, a bunch of other people use this technique and I really like it. It comes out really nice. And uh, for forget, let me do the head. Still warm. Let's take this candle a little bit. We're spreading this wax until it gets warm, and it soaks it soaks very quickly into the wood. Uh, you have to put quite a bit on here for it to actually. Uh, actually feel it building up. Um, the texture is very smooth on my other uh, other handles that I've done with this method. It's it's almost like a uh, rubberizing of the handle. It's definitely no slip to it but it's very smooth and uh, very appealing to hold on to for quite a while. warm so it'll sink in. Treat all the surfaces. And I'm actually going to treat the head. enough to warm it up. And get a nice protective coating on there. Doesn't look like it's showing up well on the camera. But a nice little sheen to it. And then I'm going to do all the surfaces and get it done nice and smooth. But here you have it. This is how I've been making handles ever since I researched it and wanted to do it on my own on the cheap. Got some good wood, free, and just for you guys, I handled this uh, old, looks like some mason's hammer. I'm not sure what this is for, but it's, it's over 100 years old, I believe, because I found it near the foundation of my home, which is over 100 years old. But I also did my, uh, my Picard hammer. I just like this uh, this look to it, even though I didn't make that handle, obviously. It's way too pretty. Then my rounding hammer, this one I made myself. And it's really good. It's worked really well. And uh, it's super comfortable. And the texture you see, it's nice and like sort of rough hewn. But it's really good. It doesn't slip in the hand. And I highly recommend you guys make your own handles. If you don't already, if you do, this is just for entertainment. But... This is an intro into doing your own handles, not having to buy them at the store for a lot of money. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit subscribe, hit like, and notifications. And I'll see you soon. Thanks.